Hi friends, Nick here from Technology Lowdown, and thanks for joining me in this video. This is the first time I've put together a video in quite some time if you've been following the channel for a while, but today we're looking at how we can mount a Samba share on Startup in Linux. Now, if you're familiar with um, using network attached storage, you'll know that uh, in Windows you can often do this in the way of where you can just add a uh, network, uh, map and network drive in Windows, which is easy. You just open up a little wizard and um, file explorer. I don't have Windows fired up here, but uh, you can map a network drive. So that's, that's easy. But in Linux, it's um, a little bit different I've found. So I've explained in one of my early videos, I've been using Linux full time for about the last year now. And when this is how I was doing it for quite some time, I was going other locations. This is using uh, Pop OS here. And then, say from there, your NAS would usually appear as a network drive here, which it has for me. I would then put my username and password in, and then I could access my shares as I needed to. So there's a share there. Um, got another one here. And once it remembers your password, it remembers it uh, generally for that case. Or I could select remember the password forever, whatever your choice is. Um, so that's the way that I was doing it. But what I've learned of late in, the, say, the last six months or so is that you can mount your shares using etcfs tab, and that's through a utility called cifs. So to get started, this is what you need to do. So you want to do uh, open up your terminal, you want to run sudo apt get install, and you want to install uh, cifs utils. So just uh, install this one. Oh, let's clear that. sudo apt uh, get install cifs utils. Let's bring up my etcfs tab file. So inside here, I've got a line for each of the drives that I want to add. So that is uh, this one, my home share, media, photo, I've got a scan to file, which is my printer scans to, and I've got one there for if I need to uh, stream something using P2P. So how we do this. So you want to add the location that you're running it to. So your NAS IP address or your DNS name, then the directory that you're connecting to, the share name, then you want to give it a location. So for me, I've created a folder in media under my username and a folder there that's called the name of my NAS. So to do this, I did need to um, say, I'll go CD into media and I'll CD into there. And I'll just list everything that's in here. So when I first created the folder, I went make DIR and I'll say NAS, all right? Uh, run that as sudo. And then if I list what's in there, you'll see that that directory only has root permission. So that's a problem because you won't be able to access it under your regular user account. So when you do create that folder, if you're creating it under media, Nicholas, uh, under media, then your username to mount it. You want to do a sudo and you want to go change group and you want to change it to your username, which is mine here in this case. And then you want to specify the directory. So there it is. I'll do that one. So now if we do that list again, we'll see that it's changed the group to Nicola. So uh, if we do that again, we'll go change own and we'll do that for NAS as well. What well, I do there, sudo. Ah, that's right. Left off the directory, didn't I? Change own, we want to change to owner to me and we'll go NAS and LS, LTHR. Now that's correct. Now if I was to go to CD into NAS, for example, this is the way I set it up. I created a directory in here. I can do this under my regular username now, and I called it, say, Suburban AU, exactly the same as what it is on the NAS. Now it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's logical for it to be the same. So that's created, and just for um, evidence here, if I CD into there, I can go, uh, say, uh, let's go nano, I'm going to test a text. All right, and that's written uh, into that folder now. So that means I've got full access to there. So let's remove test. Okay, so that's some background. So let's edit that uh, Etsy FS tab file now. Head back there. So I'm just explaining this one so you can get a good understanding of how it works. All right, so in the case of what we've done just before, I'll start 
doing this one now. So we've got 172.161.252. This is my NAS IP address. Yours will likely differ. All right, my mount location, which is media. And then where you're mounting it to, which in our case is NAS. I'll type in that directory I just created. Now this location has to exist, which is why I have already created it. And then CIF S is specifying what kind of uh, type it is, uh, which is, it gives you the example up here as well. So the type. So now is the options. This is the important bit. So the UID, I find you can make this either your username, you can make it your um, user number, which Linux assigns to you. But for this case, we're just going to use the username. Now this does also work with UID equals zero, which as far as I'm aware means root. So the next bit is the credential. So we'll do this one next. I'll just put the location in. So I'll show you this in a moment, but you want to create a uh, configuration file. Now you might be saying that it's dumb. I've put my credentials to my network share in a, um, in a text file, which may be the case, but if your system is encrypted and you have to log in with a password, then there's a pretty uh, low chance of that data uh, getting out at any point. Just making sure I've got this right here. Okay, uh, I see that looks right. All right, so now we're specifying the version of CIFS, which in my case, my NAS supports 3.0, so I'll put that one in there. And so this next part here is what I did some research on. So no perm, basically no perm. If we have a look at the CIF uh, utils reference here for mount, no perm, it will, uh, the client does not have permission to do checks. This can expose files on this mount to access by other users on the client. It is typically only needed when the server supports CIF Unix extensions, but the UIDs, GIDs, and the client and server system do not match closely. So why I'm using this is because when I create a user account in my Linux system, its UID is going to be different to the account I've got on the TrueNAS. So if I go here, users, and here's my username here. And yeah, there's my UID, it's 1002. If you type an ID, well, you've got my UID there, which is a thousand, all right? So we'll go back to Etsy FS tab. I did save that one there, I recognize that. All right, so that's the UID bit. So you can put your number in or just a username works perfectly fine. So no perm, we'll put that one in and no fail. What this one will do is it will enable your system to continue to boot should this share be offline. Now dump, this is old. I was learning about this the other week when I was watching a video and basically dump, it's old, not really used anymore. Pass, it can be zero. It's not really required for what we're doing. So that is it. So we'll save that one there. Now I'll just show you this um, credentials file here. So dot SMB. All right. And then I've got a credentials file here. So nano credentials. All right. So you want to put your username in, then your password and etcfs tab will use those details to connect to the share. Now to test this, um, we should be able to do, without a reboot, we can just do sudo and then mount and then hyphen a, and that will mount it. So let's open up my files. All right, so I've got two directories here, suburban au in two different locations. So this is my original one and go here and this is the new one. So that has worked. So to prove that, I'll just go uh, sudo and I'll go unmount. Oh, uh, you mount, not unmount. And we'll go media, Nicholas O, NAS, and suburban AU. Now, if I go back to here, if I try and click on this one, it's not going to work, it's not mounted. So that has worked. And if you were to do a reboot, you would find that it would come up just as I have shown you. 
So I'll leave notes to uh, how you can do this in the YouTube video description here. If this video has helped you, please give this the thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. I will try to post some more videos, but look, life is pretty busy sometimes and I may not necessarily get a chance to do a video, but uh, when I often do a video, it's often being documented for say, my own use so I can come back to and reference it and I make it publicly available because I recognize that using computers is sometimes a challenge for us and you you kind of need to know how to do things and you need a solution like I need a solution it took me a number of well, probably the good part of about an hour and a half to get this to work properly and then I finally found what worked well thanks for watching this video bye